Good morning and welcome to Our Lady of Peace. We are very happy to be celebrating Mass with you today, either in person or by way of live stream broadcast. Today is the 20th, 7th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Before we begin Mass today, in order to ensure the safety of everyone, please be aware of the following procedures. Diocesan and state, state policy, policy requires that you wear a mask at all times. You will remain in your pew for all of the Mass. For communion, the Eucharist will be brought to you in your pews. Please be sure that you are not sitting in a pew that says, no seating or is roped off. There should be no one in the pew immediately in front of you or behind you. This ensures smooth flow during the distribution of Holy Communion. During Communion, stay right where you are. Leave your mask on and receive Holy Communion in hand. Wait for the minister to move to the next person before removing your mask and receiving Communion. We unfortunately cannot communicate the precious blood. The offertory will not be collected during Mass. There is a basket in the back of church. May we suggest that you place your collection in the basket before Mass. Sadly, there is no physical sign of peace. Please be, give a wave to your neighbor. We also cannot encourage congressional singing. Please do not use any of the hymn cards or hymnals that might be set aside. It is okay to sit, stand, and kneel. Please do not enter the sanctuary unless invited to do so. When you leave, please do not congregate inside the church. And now we ask you to prepare yourself in silence for a few moments as we prepare to celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass.
the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we are celebrating today the 27th Sunday in ordinary time, we gather our prayers today in praying for our Lady of Peace parishioners. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. 
What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for a crop of grapes, did it yield forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. <clears throat> Take away its hedges, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a herd around it, dug a white press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and the third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered, He will report to those wretched men to a wretched death and release his vineyard to others, other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to God, Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the readings today gives us the necessity of bearing fruit in the Christian life. And they warn us of the punishment for spiritual sterility, for ingratitude, and for wickedness. We have heard today's first reading, which is called Isaiah's Song of the Vineyard. The prophet describes God's care of and expectations for his chosen people. God's chosen people failed to bear fruit in spite of the blessings lavished upon them by a loving and forgiving God. Father, they were poor tenants in the lost vineyard, and hence God laments, I expected my vineyard to yield good grace. Why did it yield sour ones instead? And in today's responsory psalm, the psalmist pleads with God to look down from heaven and to take care of this vine, knowing that if any good is to come of the vine, it will be God's doing and not the people's. And in the second reading today, St. Paul tells Philippians, about the high expectations he has for them, reminding them that they need to become fruit-producing Christians by praying and giving thanks to God and by practicing justice, purity, and graciousness in their lives. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus tells an allegorical parable in which the landowner is God himself, the vineyard is Israel as God's special people, and the tenants are the political, 
and the, the religious leaders of Israel. The story emphasizes the failure of the tenants, the chosen people of God and their leaders to produce fruits of righteousness, fruits of justice, and the fruits of mercy. Giving a theological explanation of Israel's history, of gross ingratitude through the parable, Jesus reminds us all that since we are the new Israel, enriched with additional blessings and provisions in the church, we are expected to show our gratitude to God by bearing fruits of the kingdom, fruits of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and giving him all the glory. From all these readings today, we are to ask ourselves that are we good fruit producers in the vineyard of the church? Jesus has given the church everything necessary to make the Christians fruit bearing. We have the Bible to know the will of God. We have the priesthood to lead the people in God's ways. We have the sacrament of reconciliation for the remission of sins. We have the Holy Eucharist as our spiritual food. We have the sacrament of confirmation for a dynamic life of faith. But the sacrament of matrimony for the sharing of love in families, the fundamental unit of the church. We have role models in thousands of the saints that we have. And so we are expected to make use of these gifts and produce fruits for God. But we further have to ask ourselves, are we fruit producers? in the vineyard of the family by the mutual sharing of blessings by sacrificing time and the talents for the members of the family by humbly and lovingly serving others in the family by recognizing and encouraging each other and by honoring and gracefully obeying our parents we become producers of good food for the divine. This is Christ in our families, and so give glory to God. Today, we are to ask God's grace, especially in this Mass, that we may be the true and good food producers in God's vineyard. We have a lot to do, but we are given also a lot to support us in living our faith. And so we are asking for God's grace to use all those that Christ has given us and live a life pleasing to God. But also with each one's responsibility in the family, that's the vineyard too of which we have to work and bear fruit. We are invited to bear fruits even in our families. And for this, we ask also for God's grace that we may be of vital importance to our families, mutual help to each one, and praying together for the success of the faith of the family. These two will be bearing fruits in God's vineyard. Today we ask for God's grace to grow in faith and to live according to his promises. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken and proved the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now offer our prayers and supplications to God. We begin our prayers for the church and her servants. Together with our Holy Father and Bishop, may we grow in charity and mercy, in hope and faithfulness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Lord help us to respect all life as God's gift. We ask God for the conviction and strength that we need to fight the culture of death that surrounds us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Show your mercy today to all those affected by COVID-19. Heal those who are ill and bless those who are caring for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless our young parishioners who were confirmed yesterday. Make them strong witnesses of your mercy and goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heal the divisions that continue to cripple us. Remove racism and prejudice from our church and our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Clothe our departed brothers and sisters in glory. Welcome them into your heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear the prayers that Mary offers for us and for the personal needs and intentions we offer you today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, our Father, we are the tenants in your vineyard and make us good tenants who bear us force by living our faith. Continue to strengthen us in our faith and live according to your commandments. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Spirit of God, rest upon 
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O oh Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with youthful service, graciously complete the sanctified work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered and far by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Holy Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim.
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with the elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis of Pope and Edward our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
though many we are, one bread, one body, for we all partake of the one bread and one chalice. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, with love, and serve the Lord. I wish you all a blessed Sunday.